You know what sound that is, folks. You bet. It's a Tuesday. It's noon, which means the noon whistle. I'm Chris Strottier. And I'm John Anzalone, and we're here with members of the Middle School Hope Squad. Thank you guys for taking some time to join us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, who do we have here? Let's start with uh, seventh grade. So I'm a Hope Squad member. My name's Ella Trottier, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm a Hope Squad member. My name's Gary Mann, and I'm also in seventh grade. I'm a Hope Squad member. My name's Lucy Person, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm a Hope Squad member, and my name is Emma Robers, and I'm also in eighth grade. Awesome. Thanks for sharing your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is like the, you guys are like the first middle school group we've ever had on the noon whistle. Okay. Yeah, you are, are you going to be fun? Company. Are they fun? Yeah. Are you guys fun? Yeah. Are you relaxed? Yeah, we're pretty fun. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> well, we hope so. So tell us what's Hope Squad for someone that doesn't know what it is or what you do. Um, so Hope Squad is basically a club. Um, they have it in the middle school and they also have it in the high school where um, basically it's just um, to help support people through mental health and also create mental health awareness. Also, um, one big thing is suicide prevention that we kind of focus on, um, keeping anyone who is having those thoughts or t attempting to do it, preventing that from happening. Okay. Anybody else? Also, um, we get picked as a Hope Squad member because of our peers, because our peers know that we can help them, so we get elected by our fellow classmates. So what, eighth grade, what kind of qualities do you think people that are on Hope Squad have? I think that they have to be kind and good listeners and, like, actually care about the people and not just, like, make fun of them. I also think that they have to be observant of others because some people, if they're showing signs of suicide, they aren't the most obvious people. So how do, how, how do students get to know who's on Hope Squad? We talked a little bit about this before, before. So how do they, you know, what's the, tell, tell, like if a student wanted to reach out to Hope Squad, how would they know? What's the process? Um, usually, they, it's usually anonymous. anonymous. I don't know how to say it, but um, yeah. So <laughs> usually you're grounded. Oh <laughs> um, so usually they don't know who the person is in Hope Squad, and they usually like just think of them as like a friend who's listening. And those Hope Squad members will then go right away to the um, guidance counselor and report it, so that the um, then the professionals can put it in, like, take care of it. Because we're not therapists. We're just um, a way for if people are scared to talk to adults about their mental health, they can come to us instead. You're kind of that middle person or that first contact maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you so guys, what, have you guys been, has, have all four of you, one of you, two of you, have you guys helped and coached somebody through some situations? Let's start with the eighth grade. It looks like Emma's shaking her head. So Emma, I mean, obviously you can't tell the situation, but you know, did you find that you were, what, what was that experience like helping out a fellow classmate? It's hard sometimes because A, sometimes they don't seem like a person who would have those thoughts or want to do something like that. And B, if it's someone who's really close to you, it's really hard because you feel like, I don't know, it's like kind of your fault that you didn't see it earlier or that you could have helped them in other ways like that. But otherwise, since we get a bunch of training, it's like, okay, I know what to do and I can help them and I will just go to somebody who knows what to do. Like what kind of training do you guys get in general? Um, we'll have like lessons about like, at the beginning of the year, it's mostly um, like how to see the signs of suicide prevention. And then we learn about ACT, Acknowledge, Care, Tell. And then towards the end of the year, we learn more about like the reasons some people may be feeling this way. So Gary, you, you haven't spoken. Tell me, tell me about uh, what have you, what has been your experience with being a Hope Squad member? Go anywhere with it. Talk about some of the events you've done, 
Just tell your story as a Hope Squad member. Being a Hope Squad member did, it boosted my communication skills because it was easier to talk to people. And it just made me feel happy that I was able to help people too. Our events that we do are hands-on events most of the time. So like us Hope Squad members like have fun doing the events. Um, my favorite was probably the Hope Notes, which we had this thing called Hope Week where it was just all about Hope Squad and our event was Hope Notes. So before Hope Week, all the Hope Squad members would like hide notes around the school and like they'd have um, like little notes on them, like little inspiration quotes on them. And then they were just really fun to make too. So you guys aren't just there when someone seeks you out or, or needs someone to listen. You guys are on the preventative end of things too, right? Mm -hmm. Like the event you just talked about, are there other events like that? Um, we have Anti-Bullying Week, we have May Mental Health Month, and then Hope Week. And within those, we will do different activities. Like for May Mental Health Month, we had, well, what did we do? We um, had people walk outside and like do scavenger hunts. To, mm -hmm. That way they were in the sunshine. And sometimes that makes people feel happier and more connected to people. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does it make you guys feel serving or helping others? It makes me feel like happy and like it makes me like feel like even on their side, like I just helped someone and now I feel great about it. And I think it also help people who may not have mental health or aren't struggling to go be like, oh, well, if they're doing that, well, then even though I'm not a whole squad member, I can still make a change and go help other people. Ella, how does it make you feel helping other people when you've listened to someone? How do you feel? Um, it's always a really good feeling knowing that now that they're after me figuring that out and going and telling the counselors that they are in good hands and now they can recover from that. Do you, do you guys, um, how, how, are, how do the teachers, like who are your advisors and, and what's their role in Hope Squad? So let's go to Lucy, tell us, who's your advisors? Um, our main ones are Mrs. Mariano, Ms. Rogowski, Ms. Bladder, and Mr. Galani. And they're there for when we do hear about someone who needs help or if someone tells us that they need help, we can take them to one of our advisors to get them help. Emma, what have you found? Like, how have they how have they supported you, the, the entire, all the students in, in making sure that all students feel connected and supported and cared for? What else have they done? Well, whenever something like bad happens in our community, they're always there to like make sure that we are okay. And they really make us feel welcome. And if people just join Hope Squad that year, they make sure that if people who have been on the Hope Squad in years prior, they're welcoming to that person and then they won't feel left out because they don't have any prior knowledge about suicide prevention and all of that. And they also do fun things for us to make sure that we aren't all stressed out. Like this past week, last week on Thursday, we had a cookout for the Hope Squad members. Oh, nice. Who did the cooking? <laughs> Galani do the cooking. Mr. Galani do the cooking. Did he have any favorite seasoning he likes? Um, <laughs> so if I was thinking about joining Hope Squad 1, how would I know I can join Hope Squad and that it's a club? And two, what would you tell me if I was thinking about it? What would you tell me about Hope Squad? So let's each take a turn. Let's start with eighth grade and we'll move through seventh grade. Well, for Hope Squad, to be able to be in it, you have to be nominated by your peers. So a good way to get the chance to be in it is to just be nice to others and like be there for them. So then when the nominations do come around, they have an idea of who they would want to put. And I would also say that you have to do like, not random acts of kindness, but always be kind to other people and helpful because then they'll see you as a nice person who they feel comfortable talking to, even if they don't feel comfortable talking to an adult. Good thing for all of us to do, right? All the time. Um, and just like the best thing to like, to do to like people to notice you as a good person is always be a great listener and also be a good student. It's lots of people who are good students are also really nice. I know it's just kind of like stereotypical, but um, so just kind of be nice, good student, 
always be listening to people and be open to chat whenever someone is ready to or to talk to you. Yeah. And so anybody can like try to get a Hope Squad, but you just gotta be like good listener, be able to com communicate with everybody pretty well. Um, you need to know like, what can I do to help these people? And sometimes people think like, oh, all the kids that are in Hope Squad are like all super popular and like, like everybody knows them. But once you think about it, like everybody in Hope Squad are like amazing helpers with everybody. Well, just so you guys know, if you can you see this on your end? I'm, I was posting comments from social media and Jake, Jacob Chase posted from LinkedIn, best noon whistle yet. Great kids, more aware and articulate than some adults. I praise coming from Mr. Chase. And then uh, Mr. Hansen says, keep up the great work. So that's awesome work that you guys are doing. I think, Gary, you went to this a little bit, and I'm just going to go right around the room. We're going to go to Ella and then, and then Emma and Lucy on this one because you kind of started it. What is one thing people maybe don't understand about Hope Squad members or maybe don't understand about Hope Squad? Like, like tell some, people have some assumptions about it, but maybe it's not what it really is. Ella, you go first. Um. This is like, it's kind of similar to what you just said, but we're human beings too, and that we have feelings, so we can't always be there for the people. Um, and that if you think that we're good role models and everything, um, reflect and be like that for us too, because a lot of people think that, oh, well, they're always open to help. Like, oh, sure. And so, no, we're not always open to help that because we have feelings too, and that we're a priority sometimes too. So, yeah. All right, Emma. I would honestly say what Ella said that we also sometimes we get stressed out from Hope Squad because if you're helping somebody and you don't know if they if it's like on a weekend and you can't get them help before the weekend like you're stressed out the whole weekend because you're like did something bad happen to them do they get the help they need do they talk yeah. to someone? Lucy take I us home there I kind of feel the opposite of Gary because I've heard a lot of people say that most people on Hope Squad are like weird and not as popular. And like I've known popular kids who have been chosen to be on Hope Squad, but they don't want to get on it because they think it's going to ruin their reputation when it's really just a fun way to meet new people and be able to help out. Well, think about how popular you're going to be now that you're on social media and we pushed you out mm -hmm. and you guys were not only uh, more aware and more articulate than most adults. So we appreciate you guys. Yeah joining us and john you know it's it's amazing how quickly time flies but uh, it does. let's go around the room and do some quick shout outs and thank yous so john we'll let you go first and i'll go and then we'll go right around to our hope squad members all right real quick before i shout out though do you guys know what's popular what's popular is just being a good person that's what's popular yeah and we all should be popular right you're right so yeah i just want to thank um, the organizers of the Memorial Day parades, not only in Elkhorn, but everywhere, there's like great stuff going on this weekend, recognizing those that gave the ultimate sacrifice and speeches and all those kinds of things that, uh, yeah, it was a great weekend, great weather for it. And uh, thanks to all that put those things together. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm going to give a quick shout out to all the educators. Uh, as much as the students are so excited for summer break, um, as you guys mentioned, uh, helping people can be exhausting and all the educators, no matter if you're a support staff, any faculty member, administration, teacher, just thanks for all your commitment to making, giving kids a better opportunity and more opportunities for success. So we're going to go right to seventh grade. Gary, who do you want to thank, buddy? Um, I want to thank my friend David because he's always there for me. Like when I needed help for anything, it like even like homework, stuff like that, I can always count on him to be there for me. Um, I'm going to thank Mr. Trottier because he allowed us to have this opportunity to be on here. Or you can call me dad. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh. welcome. Um, I'd like to thank my friends because they're able to just make me laugh when I'm down and just make sure I have a good time and then help me out when I need them. How about finish it off? I want to give a shout out to all my friends and family because they're always there to support me. Awesome. Awesome. You guys have a great summer. 
Yes, and have a great summer. And are you ready for the magic pose? Get ready, because that concludes the noon whistle. Thanks for everybody who's jumping on. Thanks to all our guests uh, from the seventh grade, Gary, Ella, Ebba, and Lucy. Thank you, John. And thanks for Nate and Mr. Chase for chiming in. And on that note... (laughs) 